therefore we should stay well away from them. All the Muslim scholars of the past have advised us that the person or the one who knows not and knows not, he knows not. These are people who are worse than donkeys. Well, first of all, Islam is not a religion for fools. These people are fools. Therefore, they shouldn't think that they can use religion. And if I say them or these people, we're talking about the government of the day. Whether it be this government, the previous government, the government before that, all of them come from the same cloth. They don't listen to advice. They don't want to listen to good advice. They think they know when in fact they don't know. And they refuse to admit that. That's, that's what we call arrogance. When you know not, and you know not, you know not, you are arrogant. Therefore, we should stay well away from them. All the Muslim scholars of the past have advised us that the person or the one who knows not and knows not, he knows not. These are people who are worse than donkeys, obstinate, and therefore stay well clear of them. And yet here we are putting them as a part, as our leadership and our government. It's not right. What kind of a people are we going to become? I mean, look at the whole, the whole uh, political instability in this country. It's a racial, racist kind of thing, and it's not right. We deserve better. What kind of different percentage of younger voters is going to be added into the, the whole, whole pot? I think we are going to get close to 7 million new voters. Do you have the stats? by uh, potentially when GE15 happens, what kind of different percentage of younger voters is going to be added into the, the whole, whole pot? Yeah, I, I roughly have that. Uh, I think we are going to get close to 7 million new voters come in. Wow. 7 million. So it's about 45% increase in our elect in voters, you know? This is going to be a lot. Hold, hold on. 7 million who prior to this never voted before? Yes. So you imagine we had seven, 15 million voters now. You're going to have 7 million more come in. So it's going to be 22 million people voting uh, in the next GE. Well, just with that piece of statistic, I would be focusing 100% on that 7 million. Correct. Yeah, precisely. Tapi tahun ini lagi terus satu student, darjah satu yang mendaftar satu student ni. Kalau dia cakap cikgu saya nak pergi tanas, cuti sekolah. <laughs> No, no, because, okay, I was I was staying by myself, I was very lonely, and then, uh, you know, I was like, I was trying to share my feelings with uh, my friends, my close friends, but, you know, you have those friends who's just, like, so positive all the time, you know, it's like, oh, Zach, you know, before you get into a relationship, you must learn to love yourself, you know, practice self-love, <laughs> then you can get into a relationship, right? I was like, uh, my definition of self-love is, Self-love. <laughs> but sometimes self-love is like a game of hide and seek because you know, I have to, oh my God, like, hello, where are you? So a crackhead came up to me and asked, boy, What's one plus one? I was like, who the f is this? So I turned this side and came from the other side and he asked me the same question. Boy, what's one plus one? I was thinking, mm, this mathematics is quite easy. Let me answer. Two! Give me two ringgit, can I? <laughs>
hey, 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 hello, assalamu alaikum, everybody, I'm Harit Iskandar, and welcome to another episode of What's Going On Malaysia, Apakabasama, how's everybody doing, special announcement, Malamni, we are not just live on Facebook and YouTube, but we are also live on Twitter space. What's up to my Twitter space followers? This is historical. This is the first time uh, What's Going On Malaysia is on Twitter space as well. And guys on Twitter space, thank you for coming into the room. We will be bringing you into the conversation as well. Okay. Seperti mana yang selalu saya cakap, every week I will say the same thing. Please share, ladies and gentlemen. If you're on Twitter... Make sure everyone uh, listens in on this Twitter space. Uh, share the Twitter link. If you are watching on Facebook, please share the Facebook link. If you're watching on YouTube, please share the YouTube link. Okay, guys, this is a very special episode because today I don't have just one special guest or two special guests. I potentially have tens or dozens of special guests and they are you. Those of you who are watching live, those of you who are listening live, you could potentially be on the show. What happened is I put the word out uh, yesterday over social media and um, people joined in, people have registered. Uh, I'm just checking on my Twitter space right now. Um, we have got, uh, we've got, we've got a whole bunch of people. I can't even count. So what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about, let's jump straight into it, shall we? Let us not waste any more time. Seperti mana yang saya selalu kata, dengan tidak membuang masa lagi, we are going to be talking about the ish, the recent remark uttered by uh, Tun Dr. Mahate, who uh, at a recent launch of his book, uh, Tun Dr. Mahate's Capturing Hope, uh, he uttered uh, a statement, a comment about chopsticks. Now, what we all know is that it exploded. It exploded on social media um, where it came off as if Tun Mahate was questioning why the Chinese community had not become more Malay or Malaysian or depending on which article you read, it didn't really matter. But you know what? Before we begin, let us now play the actual, the exact um, excerpt. We are going to hear exactly what Tun Dr. Mahate said in response to the question from the host, yes, Dr. Yasmin Yusuf. And then we're going to dive into what you think about it. All right. So right now, uh, let's play the exact video um, that uh, this is what Tun actually said. This is what his actual answer is. Twitter space, I'll get to you in a moment. Uh, just play Thank that. You. So Indonesia's exercise, which was a very tough one and uh, was not uh, very well accepted by the population, but they were forced to. And so now everyone is Indonesian. Yeah, but uh, as you know, uh, the Chinese make up 10%, although much bigger than in Malaysia, they make up 10%. In 19 of the 100%, 90% were Indonesian. So if you want to get around, around in Indonesia, if you don't adopt the Indonesian language and uh, behave like Indonesian, uh, you find yourself uh, isolated. But in Malaysia, of course, we have 26 to 30% uh, Chinese and 10% 10, uh, 10 Indian, and they preserve their own community and their, their own custom, their own ways of of living. So they are not, um, for example, let's say, the Chinese eat with popsy, uh, uh, topsy. We will eat with your hands. They have not uh, adopted the Malaysian way of eating food. They retain the chopsy, which is an identity with, with China, not with Malaysia, and many, many other things. So there you go. The common in question, which everybody jumped on, was the Chinese eat with chopsticks, not with their hands. They have not adopted the Malaysian way of eating. Twitter space, what do you think? 
put your hand up if you want to join me in on the conversation and I will bring you into the room. Anybody on Twitter space, if I can see anybody with your hand up? No, nobody wants to join me in on the conversation on Twitter space? Okay, let's go to Alfred K. C. K. Joseph, who's joining me on the stream yard. Alfred Apakabar, how are you doing, Good. brother? Kabar by Harit. Thanks for okay, inviting us. Very quickly, uh, just, you know, your name's Alfred. Tell us where you're from and tell us what you do, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Yeah, hi, Harit. I'm from Nilai Sramban. Uh, I'm retired, uh, currently doing nothing but rather than just taking care of kids. That's all I okay. do. Great. Alfred from Nilai Saramban. Uh, what do you make of his comment? What do you make of the situation? Uh, well, I've got nothing much uh, against what he said, but uh, as a leader, I think uh, a leader should try to unite everyone, not come up with comments that's going to ruin the unity that we have. So I think... A leader has to be very careful in whatever comments they pass in the public. So I think it was somewhat rather not so nice to hear him say that. So you believe that this comment was uh, di divisive? Uh, well, if it is not, it wouldn't have gone viral. True. People True. have their own perception of how they look at things. Well, what is your perception on what he said? Let, let's be honest well, here. I don't think by using a chopstick doesn't mean that you are not a Malaysian. Okay, everyone has got their own cultures and traditions to to follow. So I don't see using a chopstick is it's it's not showing that you are not a Malaysian. Okay, so just to be clear, your your, your point of view is that uh, you believe that the word using the chopstick is not Malaysian is not entirely. Or you you would not be part of. I will that. not agree on that. I will not agree on that. Okay, uh, fair enough, Alfred. Uh, I, I re really, re you know, that is a very fair comment, and I would say that I also uh, truly believe in that. Before you go, Alfred, uh, what, what did you used to do before you retired? Uh, I was working in Singapore. I was with Singapore Airlines. Singapore Airlines. I was you there for 25 it? years. 25 years. <laughs> okay, and, Alfred, and I'm back to Malaysia. I truly appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Okay, so yeah, I guess that's uh, that's what most of the people um, jumped on was the fact that uh, the idea that eating with chopsticks was not Malaysian. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? I'm just looking around Twitter space right now. Just to let you know, guys, this is on Twitter space. If you want to talk to me on Twitter space, I think you put your hand up uh, and I will find you and talk to you. Uh, at the moment, I don't see anyone putting their hand up on Twitter space right now. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, I'm seeing a couple of hundreds. This is my first time on Twitter space, so I'm not entirely sure how it totally works. But guys, let me uh, bring to the stream right now. Um, if there's anybody uh, who wants to come, Ong Hian Lian is waiting and go pi yao. Uh, please put on your camera if you're ready to talk with me as well. So here's my take on the situation. Uh, let's talk about the sentence, uh, eating with chopsticks is not Malaysian, okay? Ong Hien Lian, I'm going to get to you in a second. I have to agree with Alfred. Um, the sentence comes off as a little bit coarse. Now, I'm going to say something that you know may not uh, may not be of the popular opinion. I don't believe Tun Mahate meant anything racist or divisive by that comment. I really don't. I really don't, because he's smart enough to know that a million pictures of him coming out eating with chopsticks is going to appear on the internet. So that's where I'm going to lay it right now. And we're going to bring Ong Hian Lung into the studio. Ong Hian Lung, what's up, brother? Can you hear me? How are you? Yep, I can hear you fine. Okay, what do I can call you? you? I call you Hian Lung or okay, Ong? Just call me Hian Lung, yeah. Henlong. Okay, Henlong, yeah. very quickly, where are, you, uh, where are you from and what do you do? I'm from Penang. I'm a software engineer. All right. Yeah. So, Henlong, what were you thinking? When you, where did you first read about this remark and then what, what went through your head? Of course, it was online. But basically, we should know that this is part of his game, right? 
uh, is part of his game, whether he has something scheming behind or what he wants, what message he wants to send out. It's probably not for the masses to read, as you know, less, like what you say, right? He's smarter than that. And it's probably something's cooking up behind. And oh, well, probably we will probably see the results in uh, probably a week or two or maybe a few days later. Right. Oh, so Hin Leung says that there's yeah, some yeah. kind of sinister X files. It, it's not really sinister X file. It's more like he always has a game in mind. To him, he's a game. He's been in this game for like great part of his life. You know what uh, he's playing. He okay, know what so... he's putting. Well, he knows what words he's putting out. And yeah, he's always in a part of, for me, I, as I understand, he wants the social engineer the country in a way that he sees it. Right. He has a way of social engineering this country, however he sees fit. But then again, like what he said, um, the minority is not actually a real minority in the sense that you have like a, a 10% or 12% population that he could just, you know, run over. But, you know, there's like okay. almost like 30 over percent. So he just couldn't do that. Hen Leung, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, very interesting that there is some kind of sinister game at play and we're going to find the results in a few weeks' time. Thank you, Hen Leung. We'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, we're going to jump straight across to Twitter space. I've got Daniel, I believe it's Daniel, uh, Daniel, T Daniel Teo. Yes, that's me. Hi. Hey Daniel, uh, where are you? Um, where are you from? Where are you listening from? I am listening from uh, Oxbridge, London, where I'm doing my master's in political communication. Oxbridge, London. Oh my goodness me! What's the weather like there in London, brother? It's a uh, it's a mild winter here, uh, but my hometown is from Penang. I'm from the mainland Penang. Ah, uh, okay. How long have you been in England, in United Kingdom? Uh, this is uh, the, my second month, entering my third month. Oh, baru, baru pergi sana, baru sampai? Baru, baru sampai, baru sampai. And, uh, sorry, what did you say you were doing your... Uh, uh, political month? communication. For you, political communication. You are exactly yeah. the man we need to talk to. So, <laughs> Daniel Teo, Mr. Political Communicator in, Ox in London, what did you yeah. make of Tun Mahate's comment? I literally was reading um, someone who watched the entire 45 uh, minute video and according to that, to my friend, he said that um, Don was just making a point using chopsticks as an example. Um, he wasn't using this to criticize um, Chinese using chopsticks uh, as a kind of um, refusal to affiliate themselves with, uh, with the country, with Malaysia and all that. And I think um, I, I didn't watch the video. I didn't think it was worth my time. But I think that it's um, it's pointing to something important about Mahathir's ideology. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that uh, Mahathir is a racist. Um, I I don't really see him as a racist. I think he's a nationalist. Mm -hmm. I think he has a certain idea of how the nation should be. Uh, and sometimes it rubs against you know sensitivities. But at, at the core of his ideology, I think he's more nationalist than racist. All right. Could you give us your um, uh, interpretation or your when you say nationalist, what would that look like? He has a, obviously he has a vision of how Malaysia should be, and if you go by his vision, that it needs to be a modern nation respected by the international community. Uh, Malaysia's population would be uh, close to the UK's population of around seventy million, industrial and all that. So that is a and that is a nationalistic outlook of how a nation should be. Um, but if you are racist, you would probably want to assimilate everyone. You would probably think that you know, um, oh, cakap Melayu, you know, uh, uh, hidup Melayu and all that, you know, nama Melayu and all that. Which, um, to be fair to him, I don't think that was the case. Uh, in this in this particular context, I don't, yeah. So I think there's a difference between nationalism and racism. Daniel Tio, thank you so much. Uh, you have opened my eyes. Uh, and I think you make a very valid point, especially about being a nationalist. Uh, however, one final question. Would you say that, can you be a nationalist and not be a racist? Because it seems to be a fine line, almost a gray area, if you are uh, leaning towards one race to be a nationalist and yet 
excluding, if I may use the word, other races? I mean, what, what would you say about that? Well, racism is the belief that, you know, you are something because of the way you are born and all that. Whereas nationalism is a bit different. And it's something that I keep telling a lot of my more conservative friends as well. That even if you are a conservative, doesn't mean that you have to be a racist. Right? So, and I think the same applies for nationalism as well. You can want certain things um, to be done a certain way in your country without having to touch on race. So, for example, if I think that um, all schools should be streamlined into one one uh, stream, for example, and because I have my reasons, it doesn't mean that I'm a racist. It doesn't mean that I'm anti-Chinese, anti-Tamil and all that, but I just think that in the long run, it's more sustainable, it's more efficient, that way it's easier to regulate so on and so forth. Whereas racism is, oh, I don't like the Chinese, that's why I think they should have their own schools. Yeah, that, that's, that's racism. I, not Daniel, absolutely awesome uh, interpretation and explanation. Thank you so much. Uh, I wish you all the best in England. And when you are done there, don't stay there. Eh? You, you you come back. Eh? You, you tolong, tolong negara Malaysia, okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Daniel Cho. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so Daniel's point of view is that uh, he's, Tun Mahathir is a nationalist and not a racist. And he gave a very eloquent uh, description of that. And you know what? Boom. I think Daniel Cho just might have hit the proverbial uh, nail on the head. Okay. Uh, do we have Go P. Yao waiting uh, online or Richard Lee? If not, I'm going to bring in Ashahari. I'm going to bring you in in just a while, but I spoke to you just now. I'm going to bring in Mokka Cholata Azman from Twitter Space. Mokka Cholata Azman, what's going down? Apakaba? Brother, oh, Mokka is left as a listener. I'm going to be bringing in Matt. K. George. Matt K. George, are you there? Connecting Matt K. George is going to be joining us in just a second. Uh, as soon as he gets into the room, Matt, are you there? You're going to turn on your microphone. I can see you are muted at the moment. Matt. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Where are you listening from, Matt? Oh, <laughs> Twitter seems, all oh, my Twitter followers seem to be in the UK. You're being very non-descriptive. Uh, which particular county, Matt? Uh, in the county of Suffolk. The county of Suffolk. And are you Malaysian by birth? Yes. So, Matt. It's still in heart and spirit. And how long have you been in, uh, in Suffolk? Uh, well, London and Suffolk throughout 36 years or so. Wow, 36 years. But you keep you keep in touch with Malaysian 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 politics? All the time. All the time. All right. Matt, you you you, you know what we're talking about, Tun's chopstick yes. comment. You heard his words. What's your thoughts? Well, M is using a one chopstick to stir up trouble, which is ridiculous. I think it is trying to divert attention to himself to publicize his book. Uh, it is uh, thoughtless, needless, unnecessary of him to uh, start another round to, so that he can uh, portray himself as a champion of Malay culture. I mean, you know, I've seen mechanics. Uh, Chinese mechanics working in workshops with grease stained fingers and it is hygienic and healthy to eat a bowl of whatever food with chopsticks. I mean it's simple as that. You know, if there is a necessity, there is life and it's developed, it's four thousand years old, uh, and the history of chopsticks alone is absolutely fascinating. Um, it represents, you use five fingers, it represents the five symbols of the earth and all of that. There's a lot of tradition history goes into it to just sort of throw scorn on somebody's use of a utensil to consume food, which is for heart and health and spirit. I mean, I just think... Okay, I, I, okay. I, 
I've met them and interviewed him in the past because I'm a journalist. And uh, it has been, I think this is the lowest of the low where he's gone. So oh. really, really sad. I mean, why don't you encourage, I mean, assimilation works both ways, you know. You could encourage the police to use chopsticks. <laughs> Just as I've, I've, gone to, I've gone to Chinese, uh, sorry, Indian, but not only restaurants where I've seen Chinese families from grandparents to grandchildren eating with their fingers. So you should get out more and join, you know, the, 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 the other people okay. in the community and see how they live. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, you, you brought up an interesting point that uh, just uh, stirring some up, some stuff up uh, to launch his book and uh, to bring awareness to it. So you know that's not a bad thing. Uh, you know that's what that's what you do for publicity. But uh, but 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 Matt, um, you know what? I'm I'm glad that you still uh, have a toe in Malaysia and you still keep abreast of things and 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 we look forward to. Uh, uh, well, I look forward to uh, a better Malaysia, and uh, hopefully you get to come back and uh, we get to have a coffee sometime uh, and eat some food with chopsticks and hand. <laughs> All right, Matt? That'll be wonderful. That'll be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very, Matt. Thank you very, thank you very, Matt. Thank you very much, Matt. Do we have someone joining us on the stream yard? Uh, bring them into the room uh, right now. Guys, awesome conversation. We are having all types of uh, points of view. We've had a point of view that this is some kind of a cryptic uh, uh, under, underworld thing, and we're going to see the real reason that uh, um, Tun Mahate said that. Uh, we've got Go P Yao. Go P with a picture of a Ko P. On yep. A hello. Hello. Hey, Go. Do, go. Is that you? Abkaba. Yes, yes. That's me. That's me. Can you yes. hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Do I call okay, you Go great. or do I call you Piao? You can call me Kopiao. Kopiao. <laughs> yeah. I love that name, Kopiao. Where yeah, are you? Very Malaysian there. It's a very Malaysian name, brother. Where are you at the moment? Okay, I'm from PJ. PJ? Yep. Okay, Kopiao, yep. what do you do in life? I was a factory manager before. Now okay. doing my own food business. Doing your own food business. Yeah. Okay, go be out. So you saw the comments. Uh, may, may I just ask how old are you just so I have a context of your history? Sure, um, 34. 34. Okay, go be out. Apa pendapat anda tentang uh, the, uh, the remarks given by Tun Mahathir? Well, it's, I think it's a bit racist, to be honest. Okay, in what way? In what way? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just go on a rant here. Please, uh, thanks. Yeah, okay. Sure. To be Malaysian, we use our hands to eat. Yes, with Indian food, you must use your hands to eat Indian food. If not, the taste is just not there. You eat with Indian uh, Malay food, also same thing. You use your hands to eat. Or, for example, you can use your fork and spoon to eat in Western uh, places. And yes, to be Malaysian, we use chopsticks to eat. I teach my international friends how to use chopsticks. No problem there. Using chopsticks is bigger than Bonnet Land. Using chopsticks is being international, being global, yo. As some of us are still at a stage of worshipping the West. My friends from UK, US and Australia, they can use chopsticks very well. These Atas people, they use chopsticks. So saying that only Chinese... Chinese only use chopsticks is like saying the non-Chinese Malaysians are not atas enough. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on a second, Gopiao. Yes. I just correct you there. He didn't say that only Chinese use chopsticks. I think if if I remember correctly, what he was saying was that uh, the community, the Chinese community, continues to use chopsticks and not eat with their hands like Malaysians. So he wasn't saying that only Chinese eat chopsticks. If you know what I mean, if you can see the yep, difference. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, okay. so, um, I, but, but I take your point. Uh, you sound a little bit miffed. You sound a little bit upset, a little bit angry. Uh, what have you got to say about, were you listening to the other comments from all our other people who joined in the show? For example, yes. um, did you hear about, was it Daniel who was talking about uh, that he doesn't think that Tun Mahathir is a racist, but he's more of a nationalist. Did you hear Daniel talk about that? Yes, I, I hear that. I hear that. 
Okay. But, uh, and, but, but, the way, but the way yeah. he he writes in his books, like the Malay Dilemma and his latest book, he he often he would insult the minorities in the or insult every race in Malay, in Malaysia as well. How how does he insult? Okay, like like for example, in in a news article long long before, he said, if the if the Indians are not happy with him, if the Malays are not happy with him, if the Chinese are not happy with him, he's doing a good job. Okay, <laughs> I, I I don't know whether that is a correct quote. Uh, could be well, this is in his current book. Yeah, I'm I'm actually reading his current book right now. Just got it online. <laughs> okay, go be out. Uh, now I'm gonna have to go out and buy the book to find out whether that is indeed. Oh well, book. well, it's available online on MPH on online or something. I just go download it. Okay, I certainly yeah. will. Thanks, Gopriya. I appreciate right. you joining us on the show. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay. I see a couple of people in the comment section uh, asking how to join the stream. My producer, Isaac, are you handling them? You're on the phone. Uh, is there any way I can let the people know right now? Is there a way? How, how can... Yeah, you can join. Uh, Isaac, let the people know how they can join this live stream. Coming to the show. This is my producer... Isaac is going to come into the show and let you know how to join the stream. Isaac, you can t turn on your mic and tell the people. Uh, your, your mic is can't hear you. Okay. Hi guys, uh, you can. In, uh, I will comment into the comment section on Facebook page, and you can click on the link on the Streamyard, and then we will see you on the street la uh, Streamyard platform. Okay, to those of you uh, watching uh, on Facebook or YouTube, uh, Isaac is going to put the link into the comment section, at which point you click on the link uh, and get into the show. Oh, I see a, I see Asha Hari, you know what? I'm going to get to you in just one second. I see there's a Robert Welsh here, uh, and he looks like he's driving around in daytime, so I don't know where he is. Robert, bring him into the show. Robert Welsh. Hi, Welcome. Harry. So Hey, brother, how are you? I'm good, brother. How are you? Uh, I'm very well. Where are you? I'm in Dubai. I'm in Dubai at the moment. Ah, cool idea. Because I saw the light coming through your car window. I was thinking, hey, it's like 9.30 at night. This guy's got some good lighting action happening. No, Robert. I'm in the pet I pull him in the petrol station just so I can watch the, the show. Oh, I'm so thankful, so grateful. Are you, are you Malaysian by birth, Robert? Yes, uh, so my, my dad is, is, is Malaysian, my mom is English. Uh, Sama lah tu. <laughs> Sama lah. Sama lah. What do you do in Dubai? Um, I work for the Ministry of Education. Uh, in, uh, but, the Emirates Ministry of yes, Education? Yes, in, in, in Dubai. I, I'm working here and, um, and I, I started, uh, I was teaching economics, business and English. So it's quite interesting lah. Wow. Okay. Uh, budak kampung so, kan? Budak kampung teaching economics, English and business in Dubai. I would say that's pretty well done for you. What did you make or what do you make of uh, uh, Tun Dr. Mahathir's remarks? Um, first of all, I have to say I, I, I love Tun. Uh, memang sayang sangat lah dekat dengan Tun. Tapi I was, um, I was terkejut lah when I heard that remark. Because um, I eat sushi with chopsticks. I eat nasi lemak with uh, with with a spoon, and um, when I makan nasi kandang, I, of course I makan pakai tangan lah. So does that make would it, when does that make me Chinese, Indian, or Malay? Because for if in Dubai and in the most of the Middle East, and uh, I've been to Sri Lanka semua, everybody makan pakai tangan. So when you makan pakai tangan, does that make you more Indian or Arab or? You know, because when I eat sushi with chopstick, that doesn't make me Japanese. So I was a little bit um, disappointed lah bila, bila Tuan cakap macam tu kan. But, okay. Um, okay. But you are a self-confessed fan of the man. Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, what, just veering off the topic, what is, your, what is your take on the future of Malaysia and the current Malaysian political scene? Um, I... When I was working for the government, the British government, I, I was working in Kuwait 
And what the Amir did, the Amir of um, Kuwait, he disbanded the, uh, the parliament three times in the same year. And um, I don't know. It may be it's, it's a, a possibility. Uh, the Agong uh, could probably do something. I don't know because I have watching the politics, or Malaysian politics from, from Dubai, uh, I've met with Sheikh Sadi, I've met with uh, Dr. Mazli, I've met with many others as well in Dubai. And I'm meeting a lot of uh, the, some, some of the uh, VIPs that are coming for the Expo Dubai. And my, I'm, I'm very disappointed with Malaysian politics. Tapi it, it's, it's almost as bad as British politics. <laughs> Tapi British politics is, um, that's a different story. Like Malaysian politics, I think maybe, maybe they should take a leaf out of Kuwait's book and cancel the parliament. And then maybe follow the, um, the, the UAE's um, system pertabiran and use the kuasa agung. I don't know. It's an idea. Okay. It's an idea. It's, uh, it, it's an idea. It would be very uh, interesting, Allah Jadi. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, I'm not going to say that's a silly idea. Uh, who knows? Uh, anything could be better than the current system. Yeah, I mean, uh, it works in Dubai. That, that's one okay. thing I've seen. It, it works in Dubai. Um, the, the rules, people follow the rules, and almost nobody is above the rules. And um, everybody, even from the sheikh right down to the... The, the toilet cleaners, everybody seems to be a, more, a lot more relaxed and a lot more content and more law-abiding. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and no rasuah tau. Sini tak ada rasuah. Rasuah is big rasuah, not small rasuah. Not like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not like, um, yeah. And, and that's what one thing that's, it's, corruption is not rife in Dubai. And I, it's nice. I think that's, Malaysia has some healing to do. And hopefully, inshallah, soon it will be done soon. And on that, Robert Welsh, thank you so much for, for pulling over in the petrol station in Dubai to spend some time talking to me on the show. Thank you, brother. Welcome. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah, Malaysia has some healing to do. You know what I find really interesting is getting to talk to Malaysians who are overseas right now. Uh, we've, we've spoken to a couple of people from the UK and a couple, also a couple of people from well, Dubai, of all places, uh, and to hear what the Malaysians overseas have got to say. And I think we've had some very, very good valid points of view. And on that point, I want to bring in Ashari again onto the line. Ashari, up Kamal. Kamal, thanks Okay, so uh, I, I, I can't say that I know Ashari, but I had a very quick chat with him about an hour ago when I was doing a test. Uh, and Ashari is also in the United Kingdom. Uh, what are you doing there? Uh, let the people know. Uh, yes, I'm training to be a GP uh, at the moment. A GP? Yeah, Me medical? Yes, medical. Okay, uh, Ash Ashari, right? Is that, is that correct? Ashari, yeah, Ashari. Ashari Asman Shah. What do you make or what did you make of Tun, um, Tun's remarks? Yeah, uh, I have to agree with you, Ashari. The whole thing, uh, I'm actually getting a headache now because of, uh, you know, the whole, um, every time something comes up, there's always there's always a, a liputan, there's always a slimut of uh, racial undertones and overtones. Uh, and, you know, um, I agree with our first uh, um, person who commented just now about how uh, a leader shouldn't be speaking that way. So, Ashari, uh, just just 
give the, the, our listeners here and our viewers a little bit of background. You are actually the grandson of a, a politician yourself. Okay, so uh, to those of the younger viewers who may not know that Harun Idris was a politician in the 60s and 70s, uh, and Ashari is his grandson. So thank you so much, Ashari, for joining us once again uh, on Twitter Space and on the show. And I really, really appreciate your thoughts on that issue. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to you soon. So we, this is amazing. Uh, I have to say something that I'm really, really really enjoying this show. I, I want to bring up a comment that I saw earlier here. Okay. Okay, not, not this one. Me, I'm just going to bring up a comment that I saw earlier. Okay, so from Irene Yacht says, hello, I would just like to make a comment. I remember 20 years ago, my son was in primary four. During a moral paper test, there was a question. Apa you guna untuk makan nasi? My son answered, spoon and fork which we used at home. Teacher marked him wrong and said, your dato used chopsticks, so your answer salah. Maybe no connection. <laughs> okay, uh, so Irene, I, I don't know whether the teacher actually meant that, uh, I presume your son is Chinese, that the correct answer should have been, no, the correct answer should have been chopsticks, or, <laughs> anyway, it's a really weird Weird and funny story. But I read, just to, to uh, give you a point, sometimes in Skola, especially Skola Kabangsan, uh, you know, the questions in exams and all, and memang I couldn't believe you got na na paham na na understand what's going on. But thank you for that story, Irene. I love these little anecdotes. We've got someone else on StreamYard joining us on Facebook and YouTube, James Murali. I know this name. Do I know this person? James, uh, you're walking around with your camera on the floor. Nice carpet, brother. <laughs> okay, James, uh, number one, I can see an yeah. off-focus. Hey, brother. Yeah. How are you doing, James? I'm fine, Hari. Nice to meet you. Nice to Sorry. meet you. Where are you? Sorry. Don't apologize. It's a nice carpet, I think. Or something. <laughs> something wrong with my camera, so... Uh, Are you trying to work out how to do the, the selfie as opposed <laughs> to the front camera? Who's saying camera? Who's saying phone again? It's not here, James. It's, I know, these phones are these new contraptions that not many people have kind of worked out. I still struggle with the camera sometimes. <laughs> but James, yeah, yeah. I have never had a, a, is that, I've never had a sofa on my show, so you are, you're creating history. What did you make of the Tun Mahate comment? Oh, now yeah. we're getting a view of your house. You got a little island bar. Guys, <laughs> I feel like putting in the Robin Leach voice. We're looking at James Morales' house. He's got he's got a nice island bar with some white chairs which go up and down. This is some good interior design right here. James, we can yeah. look at your island bar, but we want to hear your voice and your opinion and your thoughts. On okay, uh, my uh, my opinion or my thought is that uh, you know we must know we must know where this chopstick comes from. Okay. Okay, I think. Kitchen, right? Sorry. It doesn't come from the kitchen that I'm looking at, right? No. <laughs> so I think I think the 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 deeper meaning of Mr. Mahathir is that uh, you know the chopstick comes from China. You know, it is not originated from Malaysia. So I think uh, what my Mr. Mahade tried to hint is that even though the Chinese community is already in Malaysia for so long, maybe their thought and their you know thinking is still more related to their homeland. You know, maybe that is what is is thought and is thinking that they are here in Malaysia. They are using chopstick. Chopstick means uh, they are still using their old traditional which brought from their own land. So I think so, yeah. Mr. Mahalik 
try to say, you know, that my, the Chinese must think like Malaysian here. Yeah, okay. maybe. I'm going to challenge you there, uh, James, to, to say that the Chinese must think like Malaysians. That is assuming, that is under the preface, that is under the understanding that Malaysians, semua Malaysians, makan dengan tangan. So if you believe A, then B makes sense. But do you believe that to makan tangan is Malaysian? Uh, I can say it is It is not 100% uh, eating tangan is Malaysian. But I, what I'm referring is that uh, Mahade tried to say that they, their thinking is still, still like chopstick, you know, uh, daripada, uh, daripada kampung mereka, okay. their thinking still like, you know, Chinese way of uh, country ways of thinking, you know. Okay. They are not thinking uh, like I, Malaysian, you know. Yeah. You know what? You're probably not far wrong uh, because we watched the entire interview. He kind of lent on that. All right, James, thank you very much for your view of your kitchen and your white bar <laughs> We had a great thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'm going to be bringing in uh, Gerben. Uh, this is Gerben. Uh, Gerben De Boer on a Twitter space. So Ger I believe it's Gerben, I, I believe I'm pronouncing, or perhaps it's Gerben. He yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi, uh, how do I pronounce your name? Well, if you want to say it in Dutch, it's Gerben, it's with the hard G, but it's, uh, it's Gerben in English and uh, Iskandar formulation, so that's... Oh, Gerben. Gerben, yes. uh, and you're, you're in Holland, did you say? Yes, that's right. I'm uh, based out of Utrecht in, uh, in the Netherlands. Oh, wow. Okay. And so, Herben, are you in any way linked or related to Malaysia? I've lived in Malaysia for eight years and I actually uh, married a Malaysian while I was there and now we're living in the Netherlands. Fantastic. And so, do you keep a, a finger on the pulse of Malaysian politics? Yes, I do. I try and read the Malaysian newspapers almost every day. Uh, politics, I don't want really to get too involved in because I know that's uh, like a hot topic over there. But uh, I thought in, in this is in this instance, and I'm following you on, uh, on on Twitter and everything. I thought I would I would join in because you know the Netherlands is a very multiracial country as well. We've got a lot of uh, uh, foreigners here, like Turkish and Moroccans and. You know the, the, the remark that uh, uh, that to Mahadi made made me realize that you know it's it's not different in Malaysia than it is uh, let's say in other parts of the world. But I think you just have to be very careful with the remarks that you're making. And I've I've listened to quite a number of comments uh, over here in, in let's say in this session, and I have to agree with most of them. But you know we are eating with our hands uh, at home over here as well. My wife is a very good cook, so we eat a lot of Malaysian food, which is uh, which is awesome. And when I'm in Malaysia, I go to the mamats and I eat with my hands. And if I go to an Indian restaurant, I eat banana leaf, I eat with my hands. And if I go to a Chinese restaurant, I eat with chopsticks. And I don't know whether that has got, whether to meant anything uh, racist with that remark. Uh, and like what Daniel mentioned at the beginning of the session, I think it's more nationalistic i think everybody should adapt to uh, to the situation that they feel most comfortable with and not uh how can i say play racial politics uh, with that kind of remark so to speak um but of course you were in malaysia for eight years so i guess you had you've had a first-hand point of view for, as a foreigner uh watching what Basically, is uh, all Malaysians understand that we are divided into yes. races, including our political part parties and all. Uh, I'm just interested to know, as as a foreigner who came to Malaysia, lived here for eight years, married a Malaysian, you know, um, it's always interesting to hear uh, points of view from other cultures and other other countries. So, what did you, you know, what did you make of of that over the years and, and to this point? Well, to, to be very honest, and it's, I, I don't want to be sounding racist myself or whatever it is, but uh, I believe uh, Malaysian politics and the way that Malaysia is divided at this current moment is because of uh, the racist issue, is because of the fact that the, uh, the Bumi Putras, as they say, they've got, they, they, they get additional benefits compared to others. So it infects the entire political area is based on a certain 
the a type of I, I don't want to call it racism, but 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 a certain type of of, of thought and nationalism. And being proud is one thing, but being able to uh, to accept other religions and to be able to accept other cultures into your country. I mean, together everybody's building uh, the country. Malaysia, right? So there's not just one race, there's not, not just one person, there's not just one religion, so to speak. I think everybody has to do it together. And I see if you look all around the world, I think that the most successful countries are built up on people working together to build up the country. Very so good, point. very good point. Sense. Thank you very much, Herbin. Uh, and uh, please send our regards to, to your wife as well. Uh, and um, you are most welcome back to Malaysia anytime and we'll go to the mama and eat with our hands, shall we? Inshallah, let's do that. Inshallah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, cool. Okay, let me see. Let me see what do I do now. How do, okay. Wow. Uh, this is... Uh, I'm loving this, guys. I don't know about you. Uh, we are... We're just going to roll around and gonna try and fit in as many people as possible. I think we've got somebody else here, Faris Almas Lee. Uh, Faris, hey, apa kabar? Hey, Assalamualaikum, Mr. Ali. How are you? Come on in, where are you? Uh, I'm at home, actually, uh, but uh, just, just resting uh, after having a good family time. Uh, home, home ke mana? So, uh, ke Puncak Jalil. Puncak Jalil. All right, mm -hmm. Faris, yeah. jump straight into it. Uh, what do you what do you make of Tun Tun's remarks? Okay, uh, so I, I'll just give my view uh, from my uh, from my standpoint. Yeah, just just a bit of intro of myself. Uh, I myself is a, actually a Malay Chinese Indian, so I have three 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 blood in me. So uh, actually, the the remark is quite interesting in a way that at uh, for for some people you might feel it's it's just ala tada pula. But for some, it carries a bit of weight. If you think a bit more deeper, uh, for me personally, that remark is is not is not needed. Uh, in, in, at this point of time, when we are recovering, our economy is recovering, and people are trying to get united, and people might get uh, uh, wrong ideas, right? So, for me, uh, uh, the differences between the races. The, the people in Malaysia, uh, I believe it. Uh, the differences makes us, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, happy to embrace in our our daily life. So those differences makes us uh, what we are, and it's 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 for us to respect each other, uh, uh, and and embrace those uh, differences. See, when people say assimilation, right? Assimilation is understanding on, on the uh, on the concept itself, on the on the, on the things that that uh, or the matters that we are discussing. So, if we can understand our neighbors who are in different races or religion, right? Then you 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 would uphold that uh, Malaysian Malaysian spirit uh, 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 per se. So I, I believe that remark is not is not necessary uh, at this point of time. Okay, Faris, mm. Uh, mm. just going back to what you said earlier, you you use the, the word uh, if we can understand our neighbors. I will actually, uh, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head. The, the point here is there seems to be a lot of fear when you don't mm. understand. The opposite is takut. Sometimes you, you get scared, mm. uh, like a uh, ghost. Uh, we don't understand ghosts, so therefore we are scared of ghosts. Uh, not mm. me, I'm scared. I'm just, you know, I just want to come across one. But you, but you're right. Uh, with understanding comes not just assimilation and not just acceptance, but I would say it comes embracing. Uh, so I don't, exactly. I, don't like, I don't like the comments like, oh, we should accept each other or we should uh, accept each other's race. I don't think we should accept. I think we should embrace. We should... Exactly. You know what I mean? We should just take it all in and yeah, I, I embrace people who eat durian. I don't like durian, but you like durian, brother. I'll sit with you. Go my ahead. Friend. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. 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 Yeah. That that's that's what makes uh 
us Malaysians, the, the nation itself beautiful because you have you can see a lot of color, you can see a lot of um, differences that makes us, you know, uh, feel united when it comes to especially the celebrations. I myself, uh, I celebrate Chinese New Year. I went back to Kelantan. We have all this uh, Kelantan Chinese people at Kampung, but all these Malay people also gather around during the festivities. Even I during. Uh, Deepavali, I go to friend's house. They were uh, they were coming. No, no problem. Uh, so it, it's just the differences, but it's how you deal with the differences as as what you say. Embrace the differences and make it your own. Uh, there's no problem. There's no issues with it. Awesome, awesome, Faris. Thank you so much for bringing in your Malay Chinese Indian POV. <laughs> on the topic conversation and have a good time with your family tonight. Thank well, you, Faris. thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, we're gonna jump across the Twitter space. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna click on this. Uh, are we are we our ye han light stingwing? Um, I'm not even sure if that is a real name, but he's apparently a boy who likes to play yo yo level nineteen. Ao ye han. Yes. Hello. Hey, how, how do I call you? What's your name? Oh, you are Yihan? Yeah. Oh, so that is your... <laughs> oh, where are you, Yihan? Yeah. Are where are you? Uh, I'm in Johor Bahru. Johor Bahru? <laughs> of course, yeah. And oh. I'm a college student right now, and I'm waiting for my holiday. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm waiting for my new semester in university. Yeah. Oh, I, I, you, well, don't wait, don't wait too long. Eh? In life, you don't wait for something, you, you could die, you chase it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yihan, how old are you? How old are you? I'm 19. 19. All right. Yehan, what's your opinion on Tun Mate's? I'm going to give my own opinion. So it's that when I first heard this news, I heard that, what the hell is he talking about? I, I, I really, I really, I really appalled by the fact that why such a leader would talk these kind of things, you know, like, how, how can a leader talk about that? I, I feel atrocious, you know, he's atrocious. This is ridiculous, like that. This is like, a, how to say, in, 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 uh, in critical thinking, when you talk about false cause, so it's like, if A uh, is like a, a thing that caused something, uh, is a false cause, uh, basically. So how, how can you say that eating uh, chopstick, using Chinese using chopstick is not being a Malaysian? How can you say that? I, what, what, what I believe is that a Malaysian is a totality of your culture, your behavior, your actions, your language, your what uh, your whatever food you eat. So it's like, how can you say that eating chopstick is not, using chopstick to eat is not Malaysian? Okay, say that. That's okay, I, I, I like that point that uh, being Malaysian is the totality of all these cultures. It's integration of everything. It's not, it's not just like, well, because you did this, like, uh, so for example, like, so if you go play Bennington, that means that you're not Malaysian. Of course, that's, that's ridiculous, right? Okay, you say that. But don't they say that it's like, <laughs> I feel like the logic is not there. It's not, it's not a solid argument, actually. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, wise words from a very, very young man who plays the yo-yo. Yes, one more thing, brother, one more thing. What is it meant by being a Malaysian? This is a question I want to give to everybody else. What, what everybody else say, what is Malaysian? So maybe you can think about that. And you can think in a different way. So I think that actually the Malaysian government have a lot of, how to say that, a lot of self-centered people, are basically. It's like, what, what, uh, how, how, uh, how to say Everything they say is all about themselves, 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 but they never think of others. So it's like, for example, if what what if a Chinese leader came to power and say that, oh, so you all Malay use hand to eat, not good, not good, not good, not good, that because this will not not you make not make a Malaysian because most the majority is Chinese. Ah, then how? What if what if they what if they heard this? What they will do? That this is a lack of compassion, basically. <laughs> Yeah. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your thoughts and your sharing. Guys, we're going to take one more from Facebook slash YouTube. Eric, ho, 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 ho. Merry ho, Christmas. Ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Hi, how are you? Hi. Good, Hi. Eric. Where are you? Um. Yeah, now currently I stay in Kuala Lumpur. I, I Origin from Joho. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Actually, yeah. 
Actually, you know, once the our TM to to spoken out this topic ah uh, for me is very funny. You know, actually. Why? Um. Yeah. Actually, ah, uh, as we know, as a Malaysian, since we every ah uh, every like this holiday season, right? We will go to Thailand, right? Do you know half of the population in Thailand actually they use a chopstick. Another half of population they use the hand to practice their meal, but whatever how they it is the meal, but it not influencing their identity as the Thai people. So why the Malaysians that can simply to just a people by just using the chopstick, so you can just a people not prefer uh identify themselves as Malaysians or. They just thinking that you should look more and practice as more like the Malay. Actually, as I know, the my Malay friend, every time we go out, they still use the fork or even the chopstick, having the meal, not use the head. I, so I, I, yeah. I, I know what you mean, Eric. Yes. So, uh, yes, yeah. on, on the surface. There is no one country that can be linked to makan dengan tangan, or one country that can be linked to eating with chopsticks. So yeah, you know, sometimes you, I, I, you know what I love about you. I love the fact that you, you're laughing about it. And you're like, what the hell? What is going on, Malaysia? So you seem like a very jolly fellow, Eric. Yes, actually, that you. Uh, I mean. I uh, know uh, a lot of the friends from the Australia, even American. As we know, uh, American is the multiracial country. Why they become the mega powerful country in the, this world? Because that enables to accept all the culture in the same in the same country. So they make out and build this country become the first world. Okay, nation. very good point, Eric. Thank you yeah. so. Much. Brother, thank you so much and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. So Eric's point, uh, of course, is that um, uh, the, the US is multicultural, multi-race, racial, and has gone on to become a superpower of the world. However, of that argument, China is also a superpower. And I will just leave it at that. <laughs> Guys! It's almost ten o'clock. Wow, we have had an incredible conversation. Twitter space. I'm just looking. Everyone, you thank you for listening, Dr. Arvin uh, Razman, uh, Yuvines Zisuns, Nazrin, Nadia Martin. Just looking to all the Twitter space people watching, people listening. We are going to wrap that up. But before you go, guys, let me tell you what I think. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, the comment left or uh, that went around the world about uh, eating with chopsticks is not Malaysian uh, was just one comment from Tun Mahate in a longer or broader scheme of things. Now, before I go, I want to play um, a little bit more of the interview. A little bit more of the interview. We're going to be picking up this interview. Uh, this is slightly before he came up with the comment about the chopsticks and it not being Malaysian. Uh, therefore, i.e. the Chinese community has not assimilated. This is just like before that, where he's talking about the birth of Malaysia. Um, and it may give you a little bit more broader context onto how he reached the point of the chopstick. So uh, stick around and watch this two or three minute se segment of what Dr. Mahathir uh, actually said before that well uh, at the beginning when we were struggling for independence we need the cooperation and the support of all the communities so the communities insist that their identity should be maintained so even when they become malaysians their identity their connection with the countries they came from must be maintained so in malaysia malaysians link their, their, their race to the countries they come from. They, they are not like their great-grandfathers who actually were born in China and comes here. They're born here, brought up here, grew up here. 
but they still link with the uh, India. So this divides the people. Uh, this is a Chinese Malaysian, this is an Indian Malaysian, this is a Malay. So because of that, they, they cannot they cannot be assimilated. In other countries, multiracial countries, once they adopt the citizenship of a country, they identify themselves only with that country and no longer with their previous previous where, where their grandfathers came. For example, President Eisenhower is German. He led America against Germany. Because to him, he is an American, not a German. But here we still have uh, people looking back to the old, the old country where they came from and adopting some of the practices there. Like changing names, for example, uh, because China decided to uh, spell names with a lot of X, Z and all that. Now Malaysians are also doing that. But we are Malaysians. We have our own Chinese, you see, but the, 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 the tendency is, is always to identify with the country of origin. So this death separates the people. You are of Chinese origin, you are of Indian origin, you are a Malay, uh, local indigenous people. So because of this identity with race on the ground, among the people, you cannot have a multiracial um, party that uh, is trusted by everyone. So, but uh, politics in Malaysia has always been based on race. Until, of course, but it's not all true. Because we have uh, a lot of uh, Indians and Arabs who came here become Malays because they talk their own language. They speak Malay, they had a Malay custom, they were na names and all that were Malay names. They were accepted by the Malays as Malays, yes. even though it's obvious that they were not Malay. You see, but the others do not want to. Act. Okay. Here's what I think. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to give uh, uh, to Mahathir the ben benefit of the doubt. Here is where I agree with him. Uh, the um, if I'm if I heard him correctly, yes, in the beginning, uh, the racism in Malaysia did hold on to their identities, their race, their culture, and therefore, uh, if I remember correctly, what he said was that uh, unlike some countries where the races. Uh, gave up their own racing culture and became part of the new country. Um, there was no assimilation. And he used the example of Eisenhower, uh, the president of America, who was of German origin. However, I will uh, beg to differ, uh, or I will have a different point of view when I um, say that uh, I do believe in America that uh, there are still um, uh, Klumpoks of, of, of nationalities who would call themselves German American, uh, African American, Italian American, uh, and of course pledge allegiance to the Stars and Stripes. Similarly, in Malaysia, we have uh, people of different races who will identify themselves as Malaysian Indian, Malaysian Chinese, uh, Malaysian uh, Dusun, uh, Daya, uh, whatever but pledge allegiance to Bandera, Malaysia. So where the slight difference is, in my opinion, is that to say that something is Malaysian and something else is not Malaysian or not Malaysian enough would be a little bit too simplistic. So on that point, on a personal level, I do not believe whatsoever that Tun Dr. Mahathir uh, meant any racist um, harm or racist intention from his comments um, uh, and that's just my stand, okay? And I believe we all should be allowed to have our point of view. Guys, this has been an absolutely engaging and awesome conversation. I want to say thank you to everyone who joined in on the conversation. Thank you to everyone on Twitter space. Check it out. You're on Twitter. Let me just scroll up. 
How do I scroll up? These are all the people listening on Twitter. Yeah, Twitter space on the first episode of What's Going on Malaysia, Trimakase. To those of you who logged in, signed up, and spoke to me on StreamYard, Eric Ho, uh, Kopiao, <laughs> and uh, who are the other guys? We had um, we had our friend from Dubai, Welsh. We had Faris. Um, forgive me if I, if I didn't write down your names. I'll go back and uh, watch the video again. Thank you so much for, for being part of the first multi, uh, multi-racial, for, for sure, multi-racial a chat show of episode of What's Going On Malaysia, where we talked about Tun Mahathir and the chopstick issue. You know what? I would encourage you to, uh, yeah, buy the book as well. Also buy uh, Tanshi Nazir Razak's book, What's In A Name? Because I tell you what, uh, no matter what you feel about him or... Uh, his uh, family name or whoever he may be connected to. There is a lot of learning and a lot of value in reading what Tantri Naziraza has got to say. Guys, Skali Lagi, Trima Kase for listening on Twitter space. On Spotify, we are also on Spotify after the fact. And thank you to everyone who has commented and shared this Facebook and YouTube. I so really, truly appreciate all the comments and sharing, even though there's a lot of people trolling and getting into a little bit of arguments in the comment section, it's all in good faith, I do hope. Terima kasih, sekali lagi. My name is Harit Iskandar. I, I do the show What's Going On Malaysia because, you know, I, I'm looking for the answer to the question about what's going on Malaysia. Just to let you know, just to let you know, uh, I have a comedy club in, uh, in Publica and we have got shows coming up uh, we got shows every single night. Tonight, uh, there's a show on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. We've got the week before Christmas. Russell Curtis, a wonderful singer, songwriter, and a very funny comedian, will be performing on stage at the Joke Factory. So you can uh, go and see his show. Next week, we have a triple threat. Mat Sabab, probably one of the best comedians around. On stage, I'm going to be celebrating all the comedy frontliners at the Joke Factory. Mat Sabah, uh, Muzaki Zainal, Ashraf Kamal, and Mahya Nejeti will be performing on the 18th. On the 23rd, part three is Brown Excellence, led by Hindra Bose. Hindra Bose. <laughs> That's, sorry, part two I just missed a little bit earlier than that. On the 23rd, Papi Zak is in the house, uh, and it all culminates on the triple threat with Prakash Daniel Farad, Azma and Brian Tan. This is a huge week, ladies and gentlemen, a huge week at the Joke Factory. So please follow the Joke Factory on Instagram and Facebook. It's thejokefactory.com.my and catch all the shows. To everybody on Twitter, I thank you. I thank you, Clarence. I thank you, Asni. I thank everyone. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This has been a very eye-opening, you know, I'm just going to say this before I leave. I love the fact that we had so many people come on the show and just be kind, uh, be thoughtful, be angry, and be passionate about what it means to be Malaysian without being rude or hateful. Because that is what I believe will bring our country to a better place. If we can all talk to each other, react to each other, agree with each other, disagree with each other in a kind, thoughtful passionate and open manner without being hateful or rude, then I believe Malaysia, we have a chance of being the very best version of ourselves. Sekali lagi, terima kasih kepada anda semua. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. I'll get back to all your comments as soon as I can. My name is Arith Iskandar. Thank you and good night. <laughs>